The aquarium hobby has provided enjoyment and education for generations. However, there are a few fish out there that without their influence, the aquarium hobby would not be what it is today. So let's take a look at five of the fish that have had the biggest impact on the aquarium hobby. The fish that I selected either had historical significance in making the aquarium hobby more popular or being a gateway fish in either bringing people into the hobby or bringing about a fundamental change. So let's start off with the first fish that was documented to be kept in captivity, the goldfish. The goldfish was first documented in 960 AD during the Sung Dynasty in China. By 1616, the goldfish had arrived in Japan and the Japanese have mastered breeding this fish over time and are now the largest exporter of goldfish worldwide. The goldfish then made its way to Europe, arriving in Portugal in 1691 and made its way to New York in 1850. So honestly, we can say the goldfish, while common today, was groundbreaking in making the aquarium hobby what it is today. The paradise fish, while it's not terribly popular today, is of extreme importance to the aquarium hobby. In 1869, this was the first tropical fish to be imported from Asia into Europe. These fish made the tropical fish keeping hobby catch on and take hold as a popular pastime. During this time period, fish tanks were kept warm with open flames as fish keeping was generally reserved for the wealthy and scientifically inclined. The success that these fish keepers had paved the way for keeping many of the tropical species that we enjoy today. While clownfish have long been a mainstay of the saltwater aquarium hobby, a certain Disney movie drove the clownfish to an even more popular level. Unfortunately, this movie did have some undesired effects with clownfish sales tripling when the movie came out. This had dubbed many conservationists to dub this the Nemo effect, where many people purchased clownfish without being able to properly care for them. This story does have a happier ending though as with the release of subsequent movies, the aquarium industry has put out information on how to properly care for clownfish and also some alternative fish to the fish that appear in the movies. The popularity of clownfish has also drove many people to start breeding clownfish, which are one of the easier marine species to breed. And as of today, the vast majority of clownfish in the aquarium trade are captive bred, reducing pressure on wild stocks. This has also served as a stepping stone for marine breeders to unlock the captive aquaculture of many more ornamental marine aquarium fish. Copies have always been one of the most popular fish in the hobby. These fish were discovered around 1860 in two separate instances in Venezuela and Barbados. Guppies made their way into Germany in 1908 with the Germans referring to them as millions fish due to the number of fry that they produce. In the years that followed, gobbies became more and more popular with children and new aquarists and often served as people's first aquarium fish. Many gobby breeders even became synonymous with their own lines. If you hang around in the hobby long enough, I'm sure you'll come across names like Stan Schubel, Luke Roebuck, and many others. These gobby breeders would condition their guppies to withstand disease, temperature variances, and many more factors. With their vast colors, and ease of breeding, these fish have become favorites for aquarists amongst generations. Even non-aquarists do know what guppies are and know how they reproduce. Betas are one of the most popular fish in the hobby today. Unfortunately, many of these fish are not kept in the best condition, often kept in unheated bowls. These fish are native to Southeast Asia and do not have the long flowing fins that they have today. Instead, they were bred for fighting which gave them the name Siamese Fighting Fish. People in Southeast Asia would place these fish in fighting matches in which they would often gamble on, much like boxing or MMA today. Around 1910, these fish found their way to the United States and had an immediate impact, being hardy and extremely colorful. You would be hard pressed to go to a pet store today and not find one that didn't have a selection of bettas. The impact that this fish has had on the hobby is immeasurable with this being the first fish that many families purchased. 
serving as a gateway to introducing new fish keepers into the hobby.